Hey there, Margie Bryce here bringing you the Krabby Pastor Podcast. And I don't think you're going to be too surprised to know that it's too easy today to become the Krabby Pastor. Our time together will give you food for thought to help you be the ministry leader fully surrendered to God's purposes and living into whatever it takes to get you there and keep you there. So we're talking about sustainability in ministry. For the record, I am an ABC girl, and that stands for anything but country. A few years ago, my husband kind of started listening to country music unbeknownst to me. And it became kind of a thing between us. So what would happen is this. He would graciously offer to go and fill the gas tank up in my vehicle. And then he would return it to me the next time I got in said vehicle and turned on the the car, the country station would be blaring very, very, very loudly at me. Now, sometimes on trips, I would say, yeah, you know, go ahead. If you want to listen to the highway, that's fine, whatever. And and I would just deal with it. But it kind of became a joke. We went to a wedding that I officiated and was invited to the reception afterwards. And I had to ask him, what, what are they, why are they all singing very loudly about a red Dixie cup? i I didn't really get that. So he dutifully explained to me the cultural phenomenon of the red solo cup. So I'm a little out of the loop, to tell you the truth. However, um, last week, in uh, just a moment of, I don't know, there was nothing else on, I got tired of listening to the news, you know, going back and forth between several different stations to see what everybody's carping about. I got tired of just a lot of stuff. And so I thought, well, just for a hoots, let's turn on the highway. And it's as if God had a special surprise for me that day. I ran into a song called Be a Light. So this is a big phenomenon for me to be talking about country song lyrics. (laughs) And I haven't even told my husband yet that I'm doing this podcast on this, but the artist is Thomas Rhett. I hope I say that correctly, because again, I'm a little bit clueless, but as I was listening to the words, it just really resonated with me about issues of sustainability in ministry. And so I wanted to share this with you, and I'm actually going to share the words and, you know, do a, um, I think it's a color commentary along the way with with the with the words just really resonated with me in a time full of war be peace and boy let me tell you you know it's not war as in typical you know go get your gun exactly but people are on you know polar ends of the spectrum and kind of carping at each other about that so it's you know almost a contentious time but in a time full of war be peace. In a time full of doubt, just believe. Yeah, there ain't that much difference between you and me. In a time full of war, be peace. In a world full of hate, be a light. And I'm really thinking about in Matthew where it talks about we are to be lights, cities on a hill. We are to be not stuck under a basket somewhere. We were intended to shine as people of faith, as people who follow Jesus. So in a world full of hate, be a light. And and here's here's the crabby pastor commentary. Don't be a dim bulb. I think there's too many dim bulbs right now, frankly. Just a one or two too many dim bulbs. So in a world full of hate, be a light. When you do somebody wrong, make it right. Don't hide in the dark. You were born to shine. In a world full of hate, be a light. And then there's a bunch of la 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 in there. I will not sing that for you. That is a gift to you that I am not singing to you. I'm always one of those 
people, I'm I'm a well-meaning singer. Like I would sing and, and I would sit down and people would say, well, she meant well. So I won't sing La 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 for you. Next verse. In a place that needs a change, make a difference. Hmm. Boy, and the church certainly is in one massive, massive transition right now and in need of change as I speak with pastors here, there, and everywhere talking about the changes that they know need to be made and the challenges of leading resistant people towards that. In a place that needs a change, make a difference. In a time full of noise, just listen. And sometimes I like to do that. I like to just sit and watch. It's like a ping pong match. You know, I'm back and forth, back and forth watching and listening to hear what people are saying. And I think there's places in Scripture. In fact, in James, I think it says to be quick to listen and slow to speak, which is not our natural inclination, that's for sure. So in a time full of noise, just listen. Because life is but a breeze, you better live it. In a place that needs a change, make a difference. Because life is but a breeze. And I think places in scripture tell us that we're just like the, the grass of the field, you know, here one day, gone the next which never made me feel exactly wonderful, but okay, I get it. In the grand scheme of eternity, I am probably just a little plant. I would like to be a perennial that forever casts seeds and keeps coming back. And maybe we are that. One friend of mine in ministry said that that's what we do as pastors. We cast seed and we cast seed. So that is a, that's more encouraging, I think, than being just grass that's there one minute and gone the next. So in a place that needs a change, make a difference. In a world full of hate, it continues, be a light. When you do somebody wrong, make it right. That's our our little stanza about forgiveness, you know, as in you you're not carrying that ball of unforgiveness around while the other person is just out dancing in the street oblivious to what happened. We need to set that ball of unforgiveness down um, and be people of forgiveness, not because we're absolving anybody of anything. We're just leaving that part to God, but we're not carrying it around and becoming these angry, bitter people or crabby people. Hey, I would love to hear what makes you crabby or what might make you crabby on just the right day, you know, or maybe, maybe you know what makes your friend in ministry crabby. You could send that along too. send it to Margie at MargieBryce.com. That's Margie at MargieBryce.com. And that may indeed be fodder for our next session together. So, When you do somebody wrong, make it right. Oh, don't hide in the dark. You were born to shine. So in a world full of hate, be a light. Some more lalas that I will spare you, my singing. But here was the line that just really, really grabbed me. In this whole little section, the next stands I'm about to go through here. In a race that you can't win, slow it down. In a race that you can't win, slow it down. I know for me, I I just kind of move fast. People used to say, yeah, Pastor, we know what you're coming by the rate of speed of the clickety clacks of your shoes coming. To, you know, I'm just going somewhere, doing stuff, getting it done. I remember going to England. I have an uncle in England and we went to visit him on our 25th wedding anniversary. And I said, look, look on the map. Look how close we are to Stonehenge. And he just started shaking his head back and forth like, no. I said, no, really, look at the map. It's very close to here. No, no. Apparently, the Roman roads are in existence over there heavily. So you it can look close, like the shortest distance between two points is a straight line close. 
but it's not. You're going to weave and bob and who knows what. You could end up on a one lane lane thing with the sheep all around you in the pastures. And I, it just is, it's a whole different thing. And he said to me, oh, you Americans, you're always, everything's at a 90 degree angle. And my, what just came plowing out of my mouth, I said, that's because we are going places, baby. That's why. And he just shook his head at me. It took quite a while to get to Stonehenge, but we did go there. <laughs> so in a race, you can't win. Slow it down. You know, maybe that's the curse of the 90 degree angle roads. We're always bombing one way or another at full tilt, trying to get there and not being very, I'm not patient, especially in traffic, but and that's another topic for another time. So in a race you can't win, slow it down. Yeah, you only get one go around because the finish line is six feet in the ground in a race you can't win. Slow it down. And if you don't like the idea of being withered grass, you know, from one season to the next, I, I'm not sure you love that stanza either, but it certainly is a wonderful reality check. Let me read that one more time. In a race that you can't win, slow it down down. Slow it down. Yeah, you only get one go round, because the finish line is six feet in the ground. In a race you can't win, slow it down. Now, maybe you're saying, how on earth do I do that when I've got 50 plates spinning all the time? And I'm going to say to you, get rid of some plates. That's what I'm going to say. Not everything is an emergency all the time, but there are priorities. There are priorities. So maybe you just need a few fewer plates and learn to prioritize what is most important. So you're not running around like a lunatic to Bethany or anywhere else. It goes back to in a world full of hate be a light. And I gotta believe there's something to that stanza connected to the one above it where, you know, you you got to slow down so you can be a light. I mean, think about if you light a match and you move too fast, it goes out. Interesting thought. Interesting thought. So in a world full of hate, be a light. When you do somebody wrong, make it right. Oh, don't hide in the dark. You were born to shine in a world full of hate. Be a light. And he ends with this. Yeah, it's hard to live in color when you just see black and white. In a world full of hate, be a light. And I think we do want to live in color. And and I'll just say this, too. Um, I have noticed when I slow down and I look around at nature and I see beautiful color and we're about to do that this fall, you have to be slowing down in order to even see the color, to notice the color. I have been guilty of charging past, right past people and missing what's going on around me. So I think some of this stanza, this sentence here is, it's hard to live in color when you just see black and white, or maybe it should say when you, when life is just a big blur, because you don't, slow down enough to be a light, enough to not have your light, your flame go out, your passion go out, not have your heart in the right place because you're just too busy, moving too fast, moving too fast. So I wanted to offer that to us. Look it up. Listen to this song, Be a Light by Thomas Rhett. No, I'm not getting any kind of compensation for recognizing or recommending this to you whatsoever. It just really hit me in a profound way. And I just wanted to take a moment and share it with you. 
Hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for considering what it looks like to be the crabby pastor. And my hope and prayer would be that you would be doing everything that you need to do to not be the crabby pastor.